Nintendo just released a new Super Mario Maker trailer showcasing three brand new objects coming to the game. So you know what that means, it's time to turn on the all-analysis machine and see what secrets it might be hiding. Okay, I know what you're thinking, what the heck is there to analyze in a short trailer that pretty much lays out everything there is to see? Well first, hi, welcome to Game Explain. And second, as it turns out, we still did manage to find a few interesting details that you might have missed. But, on top of that, it's what the trailer doesn't show that's almost more interesting. But we'll get to that in a little bit. So, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing the trailer shows off is a new bumper element, which you can access by shaking a grinder. And as such, it's the same overall shape and size. Only instead of hurting Mario, it bounces him back in whatever direction he hit it from. So yeah, it's basically a bigger and rounder version of the spring. In fact, the bouncing attributes seem to be identical including the fact that you can even bounce higher if you tap jump at the right time. But there is another big difference from the spring, because you can actually maintain a spin jump after bouncing from it, as shown here, unlike the spring. Now interestingly, the bumper is actually an entirely new item that's never existed in the Mario games before, and joins a one-way block as one of the only entirely new items in Super Mario Maker. Although we should mention that it is pretty similar to the bumper item from the Super Smash Bros. series. But, unlike that one, the bumper here even has a pair of eyes that not only blink as they're just sitting around, but even reacts when Mario bounces off of it by blinking multiple times. As if it's thinking, Yo Mario, what's the deal man? Why are you bouncing off of me? It's a small but cute little touch. But, there is one more interesting thing about that bumper. It's yellow and has orange stars on it. Okay, big deal, right? Here's the thing. It looks incredibly similar to the ball that Lemmy Koopa uses in New Super Mario Bros. U. Hmm. Now look, it's probably just a reference to the fact that Lemmy's ball is bouncy, and so is the bumper, so it makes sense that they share the same material. But what if it's a hint as to the eventual return of Lemmy Koopa, if not the Koopalings in general, in Super Mario Maker? But even if not, we can't help but wonder that detail might reveal how the bumper will also look in the Super Mario Bros. 3 theme. Because if the game is indeed using Lemmy's ball as a base, then it might look like how his ball did in Super Mario Bros. 3, being green with yellow stars. Although interestingly, the official artwork at the time showed it as being yellow with blue stars. Alright, that's enough about the bumper. So the second new item shown off is a P-Warp Door, which you access by shaking a normal Warp Door. Now the thing that sets them apart from ordinary Warp Doors is that you can only use them while a P-Switch is active, which means if you miss your window, you're out of luck. Now the idea of P-Warp Doors is nothing new, as they've appeared in other Mario games before, like Mario 3 and Mario World. But there are a few differences. For one, you can actually see where the door will appear this time around, even if you haven't activated it yet. As we can see, it has a dotted outline whereas in other Mario games, they were completely invisible, apart from some hints that the game may have had around them. Second, these doors appear to be bi-directional, unlike, say, the ones in Mario World which were one way only. Also, we notice that the P-Switch doors use the same card icons to denote which set of doors you're currently using, which means you're likely still limited to four pairs in total in each area. And we're guessing that the P-Warp doors share that same limit with the standard doors too, just like how you're limited to three of any combination of Bowser and Bowser Jr. in the same area. Now there's something else interesting about this scene here too, because did you notice a P-Switch looks a little different than before? Yeah, it's blue now instead of orange, which was likely done to cement the connection between them and the new blue P-Warp doors. And this change kind of makes sense with how P-Switches have appeared in most Mario games, including even the Mario 3 and Mario World themes in Super Mario Maker. But interestingly, because the original Super Mario Bros. didn't have P-Switches at all, the developers decided to use the same orange color for their appearance in the Super Mario Bros. theme in Super Mario Maker. And as such, we're pretty sure it's going to be changed to blue too. Alright, and finally we have the brand new addition of the Fire Koopa Clown Car, which like the bumper, is a brand new addition to Super Mario Maker. And besides sporting a new red paint job and flame decals, it also lets you shoot fire, presumably by tapping the run button like with a fire flower, as we can see Mario raise his fist with each one. But not only that, we can see that you'll even be able to charge fireballs too by holding the run button for a full second, which allows you to launch an even bigger one that's capable of destroying blocks. So yeah, that's a pretty cool addition. Alright, and that covers it for all of the new stuff, but what about what might be coming next? Because did you notice the one thing that all three of the new objects have in common? Yeah, you guessed it. You access them all by shaking existing objects in the game that you couldn't shake before. So we thought it'd be fun to take a look at what objects are left that can't be shaken, and theorize a few ideas as to what they might do in a future update when shaken. Now, because it would take forever to write a script about all the objects left, we're going to switch over to Casual Andre mode. So here we go, it's Casual Andre time! What's up guys, Casual Andre here. Alright, so as I mentioned, there's a lot to talk about here, and I didn't really want to script it all out, because that would take me a while. So, anyways, um, what you're seeing on the screen right now is how I've arranged the icons to separate the objects that you can interact with by shaking them to the one from the ones that you can't. So at the bottom of the screen are all the ones that you can uh, shake in order to change their uh, change your attributes, whereas the ones at the top are are the ones that don't have any shaking attributes. Um, now this actually is organized by how the game first shipped. So since then we now know that the arrows can be shaken to turn into checkpoints, and of course we now know the grinders 
uh, warp doors, and the clown car can all be changed in the upcoming update as well. So that's what so that's what we have left after all of that. These are all the things that you can't really interact with by shaking in order to change your form. So I have a few ideas for what they could do. Now keep in mind this is pure speculation. They may not do anything along these lines. But because every update we've seen so far has uh, mostly hinged around changing existing objects, I think there's a good chance we might see further modifications coming from what's left up here. Uh, so let's go and dive right on in. Okay, so first off we have some blocks. And I don't think there's much I can do with these. Um, blocks are already pretty well covered. Uh, so I really don't think they'll do anything with them. Same thing with the cloud platform here, that's covered as well. Uh, however, when we get to the ground here, if they are to, if they are to add slopes, this might be how they do it. They can make it so you just shake a ground piece to turn it into a 45 degree angle piece. Then you just draw it in wherever you want the angles at, and then it will just fill in the rest. Um, kind of like how it does with the existing ground, it can change the texture depending where it is um, in the layout. So basically only the outside ones, of course, would be the 45 degree angle pieces. And maybe you can shake it again to get a different angle of like, say, 30 degrees. Now that's again if they add slopes, they very well may not at this point. Um, but if they do, that might be one idea of how they do it. Okay, moving on, we have the uh, donut lifts here. And Duel Lists are pretty well covered in the Mario games, and they always basically function the same. However, I do believe it was New Super Mario Bros. 2 that had icy Duel Lists. So if they wanted to do add an icy up, you know, an icy version, that might be that might be how they do it. You could just shake it. But I don't know if they will, because they've never been a big part of the Mario series. Um, next up we have bridges. I don't think they'll do anything with them, but the bridges are pretty well covered. Uh, same thing with one-way doors. I mean, they, they were made for this game, and I don't think they'll change them up. I don't know how they could change it up in any meaningful, meaningful way. Now we have question blocks. Um, again, question blocks are pretty well covered, but if they want to, they can make it so you could uh, shake it, and that's how you get the roulette block from like Mario World, which cycles through all the power-ups. It'd be a small thing, but I, I have seen some people wanting those, and that'd be a pretty cool uh, way of implementing it. Okay, next up we have ice blocks, and on the surface, what more can they do with them? They're ice blocks. However, in Mario 3, they had a couple of different versions of the ice blocks, where they had versions you could pick up and throw, and they would slide along the ground, and that could be one way of incorporating it. Or they had ones that, that looked a little bit different that you could melt using your fireballs. I think that'd be really cool. They had blocks that blocked your path unless you had fireballs to melt them and get them out of the way. So um, if they added it that way by shaking it, that'd be awesome. Next up, we have warp pipes. And, uh, you know, I mean, again, warp pipes are pretty basic. What more can they do? But as I mentioned in our top 10 DLC idea for Mario Maker video, I think it'd be awesome if you could change our color. I'm kind of sick of green pipes uh, being everywhere, so I would love it if you could just shake it to get different colors, like blue, purple, uh, orange, um, like we see in the Mario World or even other Mario games. Um, on top of that, they can make it so those, those different colors maybe spawn enemies at different rates. Uh, because right now, Warp Pipes spit enemies out pretty quickly, so I would love it if you could slow that rate down, and that could be dependent on what color it is. On top of that, if they want to, maybe you could shake it to make a 45 degree angle pipe like in Mario World, so just sticking out of the ground at a different angle, um, and maybe those can even spit Mario out when you pop out of them, again, like in Mario World. Okay, now we have um, the power-ups here, like the Mushroom and Fire Flower, and so on and so forth. And to be realistic, they're probably, they're probably not going to do anything with them. But if they want to, they can make it so the uh, Mushroom could be turned into a poison mushroom, like in uh, the Lost Levels. And that would be, I think, a really cool thing. Now, with that said, it wouldn't really add that much beyond, you know, the ability to add an item or add an enemy to a block already that you can do. But it'd be a cool little thing. Although, I should mention that you can, in fact, shake the mushroom in the Mario Brothers theme if you unlock the skinny mushroom. Um, so, yeah, they may not do anything more with it beyond that point. Now, the Fire Flower is probably where the more, most potential is. Because it would be awesome if you could shake a Fire Flower to make a, a an Ice Fire or an Ice Flower. Um, like we've seen in New Super Mario Bros. U. Uh, it'd just be another power-up to play around with, and it'd be cool they actually retroactively added to the other themes as well. Along those lines, I don't think they do anything with a star or 1-Up. 1-Ups are already meaningless, I don't know what more they could do with them. Now, the Yoshi egg is actually really interesting, because as you probably remember, if you go to the Mario theme or the Mario 3 theme, it turns it, it turns it into the Kuribu shoe or Goomba shoe. And in those themes, you can actually shake it to turn it into a different type of shoe. Uh, so, it's weird that you can't shake the Yoshi egg to change its attributes, um, whereas you could in the, uh, when it's, when it's a shoe in the other themes. So I think this would be a perfect opportunity to upgrade the Yoshi egg and change how it works. So one idea, I mean, one simple idea would be if you could just shake it to change what color Yoshi pops out. I mean, after all, uh, in Mario World, we saw multiple colored Yoshis. It'd be awesome to switch it up if you could have, like, red and blue Yoshis in there. On top of that, maybe you can make baby Yoshis. Baby Yoshis existed in Mario World and New Super Mario Bros. U. Why not add them here? That'd be just another uh, cool thing they could add. Um, next up, we have invisible blocks. Again, they're pretty well covered, but I think one neat thing they could do with them is if they could make a 
perhaps ironically or counterintuitively, make a version of these that are more visible. I mean, still keep them so they're hard to see, but make it so there's some clue that they're there. Whether it's like a uh, like a shining, like like whether maybe they shimmer or maybe there's like a little glow around them. I don't know. Make do something so they're more visible because right now people use them in ways that you would never find them. So I would love it if they made it just slightly more visible and have the option to to do that. Uh, next up will be another power up. Again, probably won't do anything, but if they wanted to, it'd be cool if you could shake it in the new Super Mario Brothers U thing to change the flying power up from the propeller suit into the acorn. Um, to make uh, Mario flying a flying squirrel. I mean, I think it's a missed opportunity. They designed the game already, and that's one way they could do it. Um, wings, I don't think they'll do anything with. Same thing with power blocks. Now, coins is where we get to another idea I had for my top 10 DLC video, where I would love if, they, if you could shake a coin and make it a star coin or like a red coin, some kind of collectible to give you some other incentive to go out of your way. So, um, what would be kind of cool is that, so that way it would add more exploration to the level. So you actually have to go out of your way to look for these secret elements and it would add an element from New Super Mario Bros. U in the game, or even Mario World. And, uh, what would be cool is if when you beat the level, maybe you would get like a special icon for beating that level, for finding all the coins. Or maybe just for finding all the coins, it would reward you with a power-up of some kind. So, yeah, there we go. Um, next up we have the P-Switch. I don't know what they could do with this. Um, maybe they, it would be kind of cool if they add different duration of P-Switches by changing its color. So, because right now, I've actually had to design levels uh, in ways that I had to have the piece which you acted previously become deactivated by a certain point, otherwise it would break my level. And that was kind of a pain to do, like in my Tower of Terror level. So, I would love it if you could make piece switches that were of shorter length. Um, I don't think they would, because that goes against what Mario games have done before. Plus, it would probably have, to, probably have to change its color, which it may not want to do after already changing its color to match the blue color in um, New, Super Mario, New Super Mario Brothers U. But then again, maybe it's an argument in its favor. Maybe they change its color to be blue, that way they could change its functionality later to be a different color, so that it would be of different lengths. Again, that's a stretch, but just throwing it out there. Okay, next up we have Vines. Again, I don't know what else they could do with it, but maybe they could change its color to be a little bit more, I don't know, festive. So you have like red and green Vines in there if you want to. Now the fire bar is where things get interesting. Because um, one simple idea is they can make it so if you shook it, it changed how fast it rotated. It wouldn't be a big deal, but it'd be a nice little thing. On top of that, though, is I think there is actually massive potential here to add something from other Mario games. Because uh, Mario 3 and Mario World actually had something like fire bars, but weren't quite fire bars in the uh, form of roto discs and ball and chains. Uh, now the way the reason those differed from the fire bar is that you were actually immune to them if you stood basically really close to the center. So as long as you avoided the outer edge of when it was basically a fire bar, you were okay. So it made it a little bit more interesting in that you um, could avoid it by you know uh, uh, on the outside and the inside. Um, so I would love if you could shake it and turn it into one of those forms, and maybe dependent on uh, which which theme you're playing in, because the roto disc and bottle chains are basically the same. Um, but they do, they are different from the fire bars. So I would love if they did that. Uh, next up, we have spikes. Again, I don't think they would do anything with them like the others. I don't know what other ideas I would have for it. Now, Dry Bones is also interesting in that he's the only thing I can think of in Mario Maker that uh, changes forms completely when you're underwater, but doesn't give you the option to um, either change it back or, uh, or nor does it change how it looks on the menu. So when you go underwater, it changes him into a dry. Uh, was it fish bones and that's kind of weird because dry bones have existed underwater before in other mario games so it's odd they don't have the option to change them between the two in this game so i think this would be the perfect chance to just give you the option shake him to change him between uh his fish version and dry bones and yeah let, let me have dry bones underwater is that asking so much um next up we have magic koopas i don't know if there's anything they could do with them besides maybe changing his color and the rate of fire he you know, uses his wand at. Next up, we have the uh, Hammer Brother, which I think would be cool if you could switch it up to make them either a Fire Bro or a Boomerang Bro. As for the Thwomps, again, I don't think there's much you can do with them. Uh, now, finally, we have two final objects which are interesting, being Goombas and Muncher Plants. Um, because both of these are objects you can already shake, but doesn't really change their form. Now, in the case of the Muncher Plant, before, he used to be completely worthless. He would just spit out a little, like, cloud of smoke or whatever. Um, you would, I don't know, pollinate or something. Give out, like, spores or something. And that didn't do anything in the original version of, version of Mario Maker. But since the update, it now actually, if you shake him enough, it now spawns the uh, giant fly, the gnat thing from Mario Paint, to start that minigame. 
Um, so since they've added some kind of functionality, I'm gonna get rid of them, and we're just gonna assume that that's that they're not gonna touch them any further. Although I think it'd be cool they, if they could make it so he would turn into a nipper plant, giving him a little bit of added functionality, like uh, how they would work in Mario 3, where they would hop around and come after you. Okay, so that leaves us with the Goomba. So as I mentioned, you can shake the Goomba currently, and what that does is it causes him to split into smaller Goombas, uh, or micro Goombas, and then you just fall to the bottom of the screen and don't do anything. So I think this is the perfect chance to make it actually take on the smaller Goomba form, and add, add them to the levels. Uh, so maybe if you come across them like in Mario 3, uh, they would like stick to you and slow you down. You can even add it so you could drag the micro Goombas onto a normal Goomba or a para Goomba, and the para Goomba would drop off little micro Goombas like it did in Mario 3. So there you go, guys. Those are all the ideas I have for how they can use existing content in new ways. But what are your ideas? Do you have any other ideas for what they could do with what you see on the screen um, in, in new ways? I would love to hear what you guys think. So thanks for watching. Um, that is our semi-scripted, semi-off-the-cuff analysis. <laughs> thanks for watching. Of course, stay tuned to Game Explain for more on Super Mario Maker and other things gaming as well. Catch you guys later. Bye.